Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so welcome to the Friday experiments where I really have enjoyed um, the being able to really use this time to do collaborations and so I'm looking forward to next week doing some collaboration with Doug on values and um, and with Josh on the website hey Fabian <clears throat> and uh, yeah this week uh, I Last week when we did the session on decisions and decision making, I'd already agreed uh, or planned with Gertrude to do uh, the streetlight model with her. And I think that it's an incredible opportunity to really look at how we can, how we can dock better. Um, so I'm excited about that today. And of course, um, oftentimes these things take a moment for everyone to arrive. Um, <laughs> So uh, I thought we would do a, a bit of a quick check-in at the outset. Um, and I've just, I've just actually posted some of Fleming being, hey Fleming. Hi. <laughs> Out on the streets of Toulouse with like giant spiders and other magical beings. <laughs> you always live such an interesting life, Fleming. So I would invite us to, to um, do a round of our name, where we are in the world, and um, hi, Heiner. Heiner's, Heiner's on a train. Uh, so our name, where, where we're at in the world, and a word that describes where we've just come from. Was that, is, is that our question that we decided on, Gertrude? That embodies where well, we're what's present right now, yeah. What's present right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, I am Fabian. Uh, in, the, in the physical world, I am in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I have just come from doing some errands. And a word that embodies where you are right now, this present moment. At this present moment, I am centered and um, attuned to this moment uh, and with expectations uh, or even just curiosity uh, because I didn't do any research about anything at all. <laughs> Okay, hello, I am Fleming. Yes, I just went walking around the streets of Toulouse with giant spiders and minotaurs, which was wonderful. So my word of the day is mystery. Mm. Awesome. So I'm Doug in Kingston, New York, and I'm coming out of um, two and a half hours of flow over three conversations. And I'm really, really, really excited to finally hear this and get this presentation from Gertrude since we talked about it, I think even before her book was published, uh, her potentially co-opting a Sunday session must have been six months ago or seven months ago or whenever. So I'm, I'm really excited to um, learn about this. So, so curiosity and interest, very high interest. I'm Ryan. I'm in uh, Austin, Texas today. It's sunny in the 70s. <laughs> and um, 
I'm at a coffee shop, so I'm noticing my energy is like concerned about caretaking the group by putting myself on mute. Um, and I love appreciation. And so I'm really, I'm grateful for this moment. That's what I feel. Hi, uh, Nathan and Harry. We're just doing a quick check-in, your, your name, where you are in the world, um, and what you've just, what you've just been doing, uh, and a, a, a word that describes this present moment for you. So I'm Tammy. I'm in Vancouver. I've just been preparing for this session, and uh, the word that I would use to describe this moment, what's present, is... Courage. Hi, my name is Nathan. Uh, I'm in Natick, Massachusetts. Um, just went for a walk in the woods. And a uh, word, uh, word for, for me right now would be uh, open. Thank you. Harry van der Velde in the Eindhoven, the Netherlands. Current word is dinner, and the other word is curiosity. Thank you. So I'll be off camera to not to do, make you jealous. Hi, I'm Heine, typically from Berlin, but now in a night train from Varna to Sofia in Bulgaria. My, I was with my friends into dolphins, so my key words are smartness and wisdom and curiosity. And as always, I'm tired, hoping to sleep soon. Uh, Colin from New Brunswick. Um, my word would be, I don't know. I guess, curious about the conversation, see what's happening? Yeah. Hi, Sam. We're just doing a quick check-in question. Name, where you're from, from, and what's present for you right now, a word. Do you want one, one word to explain what's present for us now? I'm Alex Reed from Australia. Born in New Zealand, edu educated, educated in New Zealand, and what's present for me now is uh, global warming. So, my name is Sam. I'm in Pacific Northwest. And what's present is my puppies will soon, soon need to go out, so I'll be letting them out. So, don't be too disturbed if I go blank. Yeah, I'm Gertraud in the middle of Germany, north of Frankfurt and nervous. <laughs> so I met uh, Gertraud in January 2016. Ben Roberts had, had uh, collaborated on a process and, and Gertraud with a project called Unity in Diversity. And I ended up joining the very last session. And I had an immediate connection and Heidi Hornline was also there. And from that session, we, um, uh, we came together to, to do wisdom, uh, uh, sorry, she, I guess I'm nervous too, wow. <laughs> um, 
Heidi has a project called the Wisdom Factory. And over the last couple of years, we've done monthly segments called Women Matters. So there's been a constellation of women that have, um, that we've, we've worked with, with that. And I've always really admired Gertrude and just in her way of being, I've, I've been able to learn so much in, in being a witness to how she is. And when the, we were coming to do the, the final submission for the, for the GCC, I asked if she would come and help and she just jumped right in. And it was so helpful to have um, just this, her calm, um, um, clarity, very grounded clarity that she brought to that process to kind of just ask the right questions in the right time and, and be sensitive to the process to be able to collaborate um, in a way that didn't, didn't kind of wobble the process, but really served uh, that flow. And so over the years, I've gotten to know a little bit more about what Gertraud has done. And I'm going to give you a little bit just so that you can get a sense of it. And this is, this is not comprehensive. It's just a little snapshot to let you know a little bit about what Gertraud does in her real life, uh, which is actually incredibly integrated in with what we do here at the GCC. So she's a core member of the Appreciators, which is a, a network of independent coaches um, that work to support, to support and inspire people in, in business, in families, uh, in politics, in, in society. Um, she's done integral work with Ken Wilbur and continued to actively integrate that uh, over with us, with uh, Heidi and and Heidi's partner. Um, she also worked with uh, Frederick Leloux, um, the author of Reinventing Organizations in, in the wiki that they created uh, that represents that body of work, the book. Um, and that was an incredible collaboration of like anywhere between 30 and 70 people working over a few months to really make that happen and put that together. So she has a lot of experience in actually doing large-scale collaboration work. Um, she then took that work into Teal for Startups and facilitated the working group in the development stream. So, uh, you know, continuing to move that, uh, that work forward into, into these very grounded applications in communities of practice that are active and working. She's also done constellation work and brain training. I mean, what you'll see in this presentation is, a, uh, is, is her really bringing a lot of these, these different areas of her life together to be able to create something that she saw as a gap, that people didn't really know how to understand where they were in, in, in their brain chemistry to be able to, to really work with that and respond well. Um, and in collaboration with two others, she also wrote, um, this is, uh, she, it's in German, this is the English translation, um, uh, appreciation, how to create flow and meet the numbers. And that include, includes practices for, for creating successful collaborations. Um, so for me, Gertraud embodies collaboration in an authentic way, in a very grounded way, and in a very humble way, you wouldn't necessarily know all of the powerful work that she's done to get her here, um, but I'm incredibly honored to uh, work with her to, to bring this work to us. And uh, Gertrude, I'd love to invite you to share a little bit about what brought you to do this work and to, and to bring particularly um, the traffic light model um, to, to us and to the world. Yeah, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> um, actually, 
actually uh, chin is part of who we are, the appreciators, and and so we are always talking about how can we bring ease into the world, and by writing the book. So when we first started, there was uh, no traffic light model, and then I had a real almost a fight with my colleague and uh, I was talking about the practices and what we have to to get people into flow and things like that and then so he got, went on for half an hour or so and then he was really almost screaming at me and said what am I going to do with my my wife pushes my buttons then I can just hit her on the nose and you know uh, then I just feel uh, like what the hell are you talking about like piss off <laughs> and and then this all kind of fell together it just like a like a puzzle and it was like oh my god yeah if we are in that mode, appreciation is an insult. <laughs> when it's about survival, then what are you talking about? That soft stuff, and so it becomes pink sauce. And 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 so I I took all those things that I learned from brain research, and uh, so we we yeah it took a while till till we just came up with that and another thing learning with ken wilbur and frederick or so this is all about development so the demental states okay i'm very fine developed <laughs> i'm <laughs> very high in on on that uh, on the level and then somebody pushes my buttons and, and I become a crocodile, then I'm not that developed person anymore. So we need something for everyday life where life kicks in. So that, that is kind of the basis. And we don't want to, to bother with uh, Spiral Dynamics, uh, Ken Wilber and all the, the colors. We just said, okay, traffic light, everybody knows what that is. And so if it's red, you know, you have to stop. And so to, to have a very practical tool. And this is for um, my own awareness, my own diagnosis where I am, and not to use it as a weapon towards others <laughs> and blame them for where they are. It's just for getting where I am, what to do, and when I am in flow, when I deal appropriately with other people. So that's, that's the basis. Awesome. Thank you, Gertrude. And when I was thinking about it, I thought this, this, this part that kind of gets in the way when we're at different levels and learning how to dock, I think that can be really useful for us um, in our group because that's, that's part of what we need to learn. How do we how do we actually meet at the same level and recognize where we are and then have strategies to be able to, to well, be conscious of it personally and as a group. Um, so I've noticed, um, thanks um, Fabian and Alex for mentioning, uh, Josh was having a hard time getting into the session. I, uh, I have sent him the link directly. Hopefully he's able to get in here, but if someone else can help to manage um, troubleshooting Josh getting in the room. Um, I, I know that there's room for 50 or more. I don't know what the, the what that number is, Alex. But thanks for thanks for that. And with that, I invite um, Gertrude to uh, jump jump in. And so we'll be sharing screen um, for for the presentation part of the session, and then we'll go on to question and answer and reflection. Yeah, I would like to to just go through some of yeah the the information. Um, it doesn't mean you cannot <coughs> have any questions, but just to to get the concept, and then we can talk about it. So I 
try to make it as uh, clear as possible. I'm, show, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, it's about how to use the brain effectively. <laughs> so um, we came up with a, what we call an on definition or our understanding about appreciation. It's much longer, but I just took that um, poetic part uh, just to, to get a glimpse on what we mean by appreciation. That is the power that creates the experience of mindfulness, purpose, and growth. And it creates clarity, connection, and joyful action. So the intention is to give you an insight into the, the appreciators tra uh, traffic light model. And um, therefore you need a basis, the basics for brain physiology. I don't make it too complicated. And simple practices um, that we can use right away. In our book, we, we thought about whom we want to dedicate it for, to. And then we realized actually it's on, in our basic law, which is our constitution. And the very first one that cannot be changed by anyone, that is human dignity is inviolable. So, and when I'm talking to people, especially in companies where it's violated pretty often, <laughs> uh, say, yeah, it's in the law. That's our first article. So uh, we are not talking about pink sauce over, over uh, numbers. Um, and and to, to put it into perspective, that is what, what humans craving for. It's the sense of security and trust, belonging and being an integral part of a collective, appreciation from others and motivation from within. And also self-responsibility, self-care and being in flow. So, as you know, the brain is far more complicated, <laughs> but we stick to these three parts. And the brain stem that we share with the reptilians, so you can also call it the reptilian brain, it's about survival. The limbic system where um, the emotions come in, where the, the, the fear center is, and the connection to logical thinking. And then the neocortex for all, all the rest and uh, diversity. And um, most scientists say we just use 10% of our brain, if at all. So the first thing is um, what happens when the, the brain stem takes over? And it's really like taking over in a split second. So when somebody pushes the button, it's the same as if our ancestors, the saber-toothed tigers in front of you. <laughs> this is exactly the same, the same physiology. And um, the system actually within a blitz a second has this, it's life-threatening, it's danger, it's rather me than you. And Adrenaline is the one that, the hormone that really flushes the whole body. There's nothing else really of any use. So, um, and people cannot distinguish between real and sensed danger. So it's also in, in evolution, uh, when a tribe excluded a person, 
then they most mostly they died when they were socially excluded and so so the social danger feels as real as a physical danger and in that so when the brain stem takes over when adrenaline flushes all all the body then you just have three reflexive behaviors this is completely automatic there is no way of thinking so it's the fight flight or freeze mode so as a crocodile you you just within this short period of time you you see it's is it bigger can it eat me <laughs> or can i eat it <laughs> or do i just have to be a log and i'm not here <laughs> so i pretend i'm not here and there's no logical thinking as i said there's only automatic already practice actions at work that means you can still type you can still ride a bicycle you can still do these things that you have done all over uh, over and over again but you cannot think beyond that so a fireman is trained to run automatically into into the fire but he has to to practice that all over again uh, over and over again like a sports person in the competition it's just run <laughs> but uh they have to practice before so this creates a condition for survival so it's only about immediate acute survival physically or uh, socially uh, psychologically so for a person this is instant reaction also high uh, high performance so when your life is in danger you you don't think you just run <laughs> you just act immediately and um you see it then when people fight when they slam doors storm off or shut shut down in the collective it's um Timmy said you, you could use the word marking time in your job so there's nobody there you're just physically there uh because you feel threatened by your job uh, by your boss or the the collective and or you do just the bare minimum that you don't get uh, uh fired um there is this blame gaming in german we have that word mobbing <laughs> so it's it's like this mob mentality where one person is to blame for everything and that yeah the the whole thing creates stress rela related illnesses and up to the, the the burnout so and if you you want to look for yourself um where do you get your buttons pushed or when when do you find yourself in a red zone maybe you can just write it down for yourself and then we can talk about that later um and look about this uh, what kind of reaction is automatic for you there are some people that automatically get angry <laughs> i i'm i'm a i'm a freeze person so i'm knocked out i i'm physically there but i cannot think i cannot really feel something so that's my automatic reaction yeah the second is what happens when the limbic system is in control you're still i mean the heart is still needs to pump and so the the brain stem always is there but in the red mode it takes completely over and when the limbic system can come in <laughs> so the adrenaline is not too high um so they work both together and then you have adrenaline and another hormone comes in this is oxytocin this is the the bonding hormone which brings mother and child together so after birth this bonding um 
and uh, this brings a community together. So when you're still adrenaline, there's still some kind of danger maybe in the, in, in the air. It's not immediate, but you bring your group together and, and you, you find things like um, one department against the other. <laughs> so we are one group and you are the alien. You are, so oxytocin is pretty high and that means it could be, people could be aggressive towards the alien. So what we just see in politics. So in this state, there you have that awareness of possible danger or prey. So it's the hunter's um, awareness. So you, you're constantly in the, in the woods, so to say, to, to see what's wrong here. Maybe you, you know those two pictures, they are alike, but maybe six or seven different little things. And we are so good in finding what's wrong here and not what is alike. This is because we have been in danger all our evolution. And so lasting survival is relying on, on this alert, on this what's wrong here, what could be dangerous, but also to looking for prey. And so in, in here, you have logical thinking and action. You have the ability to reflect on the emotions and learning by experience. So this constant improvement, getting better and better in finding the, what's wrong here. So just again, what is it for the person? It's discernment, dis, um, learning, improving effort, meeting challenges, and it's mostly a strain and stress and overwhelm. So it's business, <laughs> usual business. Um, and you can effectively communi communicate, risk management comes in here. So people are looking in, in a technical, um, I mean, I don't want to, to sit in a, in, a, in a plane that is not risk managed, <laughs> that when they haven't found all the mistakes. Um, so it's about a, continu a continuous improvement uh, process, controlling, and since this is constant in that adrenaline and oxytocin mode, it, it's kind of stress. There's competition um, in business, high absenteeism. And at the end, it can also lead to the burnout. So that's the normal way of doing business, looking for what's wrong and what I need to fix. Many people say, yep, that's, that's the normal <laughs> way of doing things, isn't it? And maybe you can see what effects you have in your life with the yellow mode. Looking for, also in, in relationships, looking for what's wrong here. What the other one has done wrong. What making myself wrong. So, but there is another possibility. It's when all brain parts come together in coherence, when they all work together. So here you have no adrenaline, there is no danger. <laughs> and oxytocin is not higher than usual. It's just that normal, normal, uh, yeah, level to support connection. And even in this 
in this mode, you can even go out to strangers and not be fearful. So when the oxytocin level is too high, then you shut down the borders. You, you go towards the alien, the, the other. And here it's, it's about feeling safe, connected, creative. We have an activated sense of intuition. There's trust and flow. And it's not only the bo both hemispheres are coherent, but also, uh, so the, the Heart Math Institute says, when heart, head, and hands are in coherence, then there is so much more possible. And the interesting thing in the yellow mode, you have about 2000 impulses per second that you can deal with from the outside. And in the green mode, you have about 40 million impulses from inside that give you information about and, and inform your actions. So, when the inner and outer reality are in coherence, when heart, head, and hands work together, then you have that sense of coherence, flow, connectedness. And this all base is based on feeling safe. Because as soon as you don't feel safe, adrenaline kicks in, and then you have that yellow or even the red mode. And this creates conditions for effortless being and doing, and it also creates new synapses. And uh, yeah, we, that is called the neuroplasticity, so that the brain can develop even in later life. And here, yeah, you have all this what you normally wish for, contentment, health, balance, authenticity, security, creativity, inner peace or connectedness. And these new synapses and, and um, the Heart Math Institute talks about coherence. And here the job is satisfactory. You have that team spirit that is beyond, beyond normal collaboration. And there's innovation, balance, not only effective communication, but a holistic communication and, yeah, flow. And two questions for you, where you have the best ideas <laughs> and what happens when you are in flow. In this, this picture, I... This is wild garlic in a spring um, forest. So where everything works together. So some practices. What is important to know that in red, you cannot think. So you have to practice before that you can do those. So the first thing is just to stop whatever you do right away, to stop and interrupt your reaction. You could leave the situation, especially with other people. So don't argue with people that are equally in red. So that really can escalate. And it's good to have some affirmation prepared, like to give your brain um and notice <laughs> all is good <laughs> there's no danger something like that so a very a, a short sentence that that you can practice for me it's all is good all good all good it all is good so i really say that automatically to myself because in that situation i cannot think and then you, you need to get the, the adrenaline out of your body, like running around the, the block, uh, boxing, <laughs> sun sack, uh, breathing, 
Um, and what is really, really effective is laughing. <laughs> so um, you can do all kinds of things like a laugh yoga is, is really effective because the body cannot be fearful and laugh. So when you have your, your lip angles up, <laughs> then, then the endorphins go in and say, no danger here. Singing. So everything that, that gets that out of the body. And there is a special breathing, so belly, a belly breathing, when you breathe up, up the, the, the breast, this is more supporting adrenaline, pumping the, the chest. Uh, but so when you're um, <laughs> on mute, you could just expire as fast uh, as far as you can. So <sighs> breathe out, and then the lungs get filled automatically, softly, and breathe into your belly. And the next exhale, you, you have this ha, so an H A. Ha. And the lip angles up. Ha. When my husband had a long day, and then he comes into the bed, and then he lies down and said, Ah, is that great? <laughs> so this, this pleasurable sigh. And this is very effective because it reduces the adrenaline and brings the oxytocin up. So and do that three, four times um, in a row and practice it several times a day, then you can feel that your physiology is better. And uh, when your buttons get pushed too often, then um, you should, or it would be good to, to talk to somebody to really to do shadow work and, and see what happened. Why is it that, like that? So. Um, and don't talk to the person that pushed your buttons right away. That doesn't work. So when you're in the yellow mode, so you are thinking being again, <laughs> then regularly practice those red zone responses, please. And, and then it's important to to think about stress and mistakes and weaknesses differently. So make stress your friend. Notice it calmly and friendly because it's not the stress that uh, kills people, is the way of how I look at stress that kills people. And also with mistakes and weaknesses because um, the fraud, uh, department in the in the US government 75% of the fraud cases they they deal with they are too high goals that wanted to be achieved no matter what and then you cheat and then you stress and so so just be soft and with your mis mistakes and weaknesses and also with others asking for help if you need it and support others. And then there's one part that is not so easy for people to let go of being right. So that's what people love to do, to be right about something. And letting go even if you are right, because you, it's just not that category, category words about. It might be that you're right, but so what? And practice mindfulness, gratitude, appreciation. 
and also the physical activities. When you practice them, then adrenaline cannot take over. Oh, and we are with green. So there it's about creating safe space. This is the, the, the basic. Otherwise you cannot be in flow and personal development is really hard improvement, but not that space in which you, you can, into which you can develop. And it's good to have supportive relationships and structures to keep those practices alive. And what is important when you let go of judgment, being right, your standpoints or power dynamics, and nothing happens, then the old things kick in, then red and yellow kick in. So it's all not only letting go, but also aligning towards a desired future. And having that, those both in place in a safe space, then nothing can stop you from doing what you really want to do. And this is really a transformative step. So in closing, in red, just stop, move, breathe, uh, breathe or laugh. <laughs> in yellow, it's about choosing going with the oxytocin, choosing going with appreciation, with connecting with people, and not with the adrenaline and no matter what. And an important part is give, giving up being right. And for green, it's let go and align so you can be in flow and this coherence between the hemispheres and the whole body. Just to remember, in red, we only have automatic responses, so re even reflexes. <laughs> And in yellow, we can go with the logical arguments, strategic considerations, etc. But it's important to, to make a decision, to really say, okay, I'm going with oxytocin. I'm asking for help. I'm asking, um, I'm giving help. I'm going with other people and connection and that is good for my heart and it's good for health and for what I want to achieve and then on top you can come into that green space with letting go and alignment so this is the book in German I'm just translating it into English and Tammy is helping uh, so some chapters we already have so we want to do that by Christmas to have it in English. Yeah. And now my questions are, what do you take with you and what was valuable for you? So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gertrude. And I would open the floor for uh, reflections and if people want to answer Gertrude's questions. Josh? I just want to thank you, Gertrude, for teaching Germans to have a sense of humor. Thank you for that. So can I ask a question like, so is it mostly meant as sort of a personal tool of what do you do if you're in a red, yellow or green situation? Or is it, is it meant to sort of manage or facilitate what happens in a group? Like if we're in a group and somebody goes into red mode, even if others are in some other mode, um, I'm looking for the tools to sort of manage that, asking them to breathe and or laugh. That would maybe not 
fly so well right away. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking for how do you deal with somebody who's triggered, who I understand the red mode, it's an automatic, they're like defense attack kind of thing. Talking reason doesn't necessarily work. So I would be looking for the tools that work in a group setting where we, we like here, if one of us are triggered. So is it meant for that or is it more personal, like what I sort of practice myself? Um, it's, uh, we, we have in chicks, we have a so-called toolbar and there is, um, there we say first work with, with yourself. <laughs> so first look for yourself. What, how you, how your buttons get pushed, etc. So it's both. First, yourself and and be aware of that, and you only can can deal with other people effectively or really in a good way when you um, looked at where you are at and brought yourself into a better state. So. Um, so that is a prerequisite to work with other people. And we, and what we realize is we have to teach other people this, these modes because otherwise it would be really offensive. Like you need to breathe or you are in red or whatever. So not, not using it as a weapon, but we have some companies where they got the concept because it's pretty easy to, to get. And then even in production, when somebody just, <laughs> I don't know, screams or, or whatever, then they, they talked about it before and they allowed each other to address that. So say, oh, how about taking a break? How about whatever? And we have developed some practices where you can uh, go in a, like in a circle session, session where you first address everything that pushes buttons and, and then spiral that in another way. So there are many different ways to, to address it, but it's both. But first, myself. <laughs> I love the simplicity of this and the elegance of it. And I, I imagine what it, what it offers is sort of a simple, a very simple way of creating a common shared understanding of the sort of meta experiential dynamics um, for potentially really large groups of people where it, it, it's almost a leveling up function. Um, you sort of make, you bring everybody's sort of meta awareness consciousness up and, and give them vocabulary to share a common language about the soft stuff that uh, the human being being stuff that uh, plays such a large role and doesn't have any voice or expression or frame of reference in in most workplaces. Um, so it's I I really um, it's really terrific. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and going back to to Fleming, it um, you can also do things that gets adrenaline out of the body like uh, people shaking off uh, trampling um, laughing whatever so you can do practices without saying oh you are in red so so but it's important to introduce the concept when you want to deal with it and people uh, take uh, can address it with others so there, there must be an understanding a mutual understanding yeah Fabian yes uh, first of all uh, thank you very much for for such a clear way 
of uh, offering a concrete uh, metaphors for dealing with such complex issues, right? Uh, this contributes to what is called clean language. So uh, th those could be very simple metaphors for dealing and um, for referring to the same thing when just referring to to something as simple as a color, right? Um, my question is when you have some dissonance between the collective color of a group or a team and the organizational color, uh, it can be both both ways. Uh, the, the organization in red and the team in blue or vice versa. So how is that uh, deal with or, or dealt with? Somehow you muted. Yeah, we both pressed the button at the same time. So it depends on whom I'm working with. Say it's it's a small group within that have a higher boss who is very um, angry, <laughs> often um, yelling, things like that. So people learn not to react, counter react right away. So it, it's important that we deal with our and bring our in a mode that we are able to, to deal with that. And there are many things, the meditation and all what I, there are many different things that you can do. But it's always when you're in red, it's just you cannot think and your reaction is automatic. So when the bus yells, somebody might yell back, the other one just escapes. Uh, so this is just automatic. We had a, a company where the, the, the daughter were 300 people in one city uh, and um, the, the big bosses, they decided to close that daughter good just we need to get rid of 300 people why not just close that and so they were all like crocodiles on in the aisles <laughs> and we had in our appreciative inquiry training we had one of the leaders who said not gonna happen really worked his way through with they came together and showed the bosses that it was worth keeping them. And it was a small town, 300 people with no job means 300 families. And, and he, he got his strength out of that training group and got coaching and, and reaffirming and, and so he really got that, that he could go to the big bosses and said, we have done this and this and this, and this is my plan and uh, we have proven it. And, and they didn't. So he really managed it to, 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 to keep that place going. And I'm, today I'm still just amazed how he could manage himself almost alone to get the others back from that red crocodile mode. And, and I think that is possible. Going the other way, it's similar. I mean, when we talk with bosses and they have a group that is completely <laughs> offensive and it's there say okay you have to talk uh, to to work with yourself first before you deal with those people and that's the same alex you had something yeah when the, when the alcoholics come into aa from the first meeting you can see the stages of their recovery 
Sometimes you see them come in three times a week. And over a period of 12 months, we witness this transformation take place. Because they come in and new, the newcomer, fresh off the street, full of resentment and full of, full of that. hatred for themselves, low self-esteem, anger, and that's the, the red zone, I guess. But uh, it transformed slowly. It was like, like what Jordan Peterson was talking about. The orchestra, the, uh, the reflex, the orienting, the orienting reflex, which can happen quickly and can happen over long periods of time. The quick response comes from the brainstem. It's the fight or fight or flight, you know, the adrenaline rush. It's like the, Jordan Peterson described it as the snake, the snake striking, and you jump out of the way quickly. That's very rapid. That's extremely fast yeah. response. Mm -hmm. That's the orientating reflex. But after <coughs> <coughs> the slow one happens over twelve months or longer. Well, your mind, yeah, your mind, yeah, the beliefs change in your mind. Yeah, and it's like the, the post-traumatic stress syndrome. This is like, you cannot change it in this moment. It's, it's a split second that it happens, but you can deal with it because when you know, okay, there it is again. And then you, you have something at place that, that you can practice. The other thing that I think is great is, is for us to have a common language around this. So that, um, I mean, I think that it, it, it would be more difficult to have someone who was new to a session, uh, you know, like Fleming's talking about in, in, in these kinds of sessions, how would you deal with that with a new person who isn't conversant with it? That's an open question to experiment with. But for those of us who are regularly gathering to be able to kind of be reflective of where we are, um, I think that can, that's going to be really helpful for us. I'm, I'm interested also in how could one potentially signal it? Like, for example, again, in this kind of conversation, for some people, even sort of taking the, the floor and starting speaking would be a red situation, that you're all triggered, this is really dangerous, people are looking at me. That's like a fight or flight kind of thing for some people. But yeah, that, sure. might, that might not be obvious to the rest of us so if we're mostly in green or finding out what's what navigating, what's not working, that you might not get that for this person is totally just holding on for dear life. And, uh, and, and that might uh, make the rest of us not respond appropriately. So if, if there's a way of knowing that this person is just, just saying something is like life or death, that would uh, allow us to deal with it a little differently. So, so like, how can we show it? There's a self-awareness, but there might also be, how can I signal that I am kind of in red mode right now? I'm triggered, but I'm talking. Some of us can say it directly, but some people might not. So there might need to be more gentle ways of saying I'm the whole hoisting the red flag while I'm speaking here. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think it's it's also the language they use. If they want to be right about something constantly, not just a little bit, but like, yeah, but. <laughs> um, or, yeah, in a way, uh, just not, not being able to to wait till the others um, till everybody shared but have to because that you can have a sensitivity of what just happens and then you can address it when yourself not in red <laughs> then you can address it otherwise it it's fight great and if you say you are in red i mean then he is really in red I, I, you know, it's funny. I had this this picture of you, you bringing this to a really large organization, like one of those, one of those Apple presentations. Except the audience is equipped either with an app 
or some kind of device they're wearing where the audience voices their response by declaring themselves in real time. Uh, so that, you know, Steve Cook is looking out and sees everything go red and go, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, one, one of the visions Fabian and I have kicked around is, is in, in our vision for this, you know, um, metacognition machine works platform is the idea that in conversations like this, there is actually real time monitoring like you're describing in terms of language and voice modulation so that it actually signals the group that somebody is expressing themselves, you know, is expressing this dimension of their, of their state of being so that like people can respond. Um, but it's, it's a really valuable, I think it's a hugely valuable sort of metaphor. Um, I could really, I could, I, I'd love to see like a hat, with a stoplight on it that works, <laughs> some some kind of physical device that, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm complete. There's some physical devices for the Heart Math Institute has a feedback thing, and then others um, with a heart rate and and so for stress restriction. So there are some physical devices, and there are some also like more like I like the content, so the green, yellow, red, but you could also use it for other purposes, so. Great. I think there might, there might be a need for a, a fourth color for people who are experiencing a psychotic episode. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That's, um, That's something else. Hi, Gertrude. I want to say thank Hi, you Grace. very much. Um, this session is very timely for um, what I'm personally dealing with and also what I'm seeing in in my network as well, both kind of locally and internationally, that we're all dealing with a lot of stress. And um, one of the things that I decided to do, I, I guess I've been feeling for the last few weeks that I've been in yellow and that I was bordering on going into red at time. And um, I've recovered from complex PTSD this year and I could feel myself slipping back during, due to a bereavement. Um, and so what I decided to do was I decided to look at my network and identify five women who I knew would understand the challenges that I'm facing. And I took out a subscription to Zoom and I created a Facebook chat group. And I basically reached out to those women and said, you know, I, I, I need you um, and I think you need me. And um, can we get on a Zoom call on Thursday night? And it was very difficult for, um, like only one woman turned up and then two of the other women, I had to reach out to them individually during the, you know, during the time that we were going to have the call and say, you know, hey, can you join us? And I think someone else said, you know, it's uh, that thing of when you're in yellow or, or red to, to connect with others and to be vulnerable and to um, feel emotions or express emotions that are deemed to be shameful. Um, so, you know, um, and addictive behaviors that come up when we go into red is a big one for me. Um, and um, yeah, so we managed to meet for an hour and a half last night and eventually there was four of us that got together on the call and it was really powerful and I think it's something that I need in my life regularly um, to just have a, a small circle of trust that I can meet with regularly online um, to hold that space for each other and I think you know for me six is kind of 
the most amount of people that I can hold space for and that I would want to hold space for me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Grace. Um, actually, our default mode is red or green. Red for immediate danger and green, uh, and no, red and yellow. And yellow for the long-term survival. Um, but to create green, we have to practice <laughs> like in sports like with meditation this is a, a constant daily practice creation doesn't come automatically it's just a way of being that you have practice over and over again so that what you said i need so however you you create that a uh, phone call, meeting in person, uh, weekly, bi-weekly, whatever. But to have that space in which you feel safe enough to talk about those things. So green needs safety. It's like the cave with our ancestors. It's like the sable-toothed tiger is right in front of you and you have to, in a split second, react. And the yellow is more like I'm roaming in that, in the savanna and, and see some bended leaves and see some footprints and uh, roam, <laughs> roaring somewhere. And, and this, what's wrong here is where it could be danger or prey. <laughs> and, and, this is our automatic way of being and green is we have a safe cave and we have maybe guardians outside and then we can sit around the campfire and and, and chant and uh, i don't know have some art created that can't be if you feel in danger or in possible danger and so that this is really something we have to practice. It doesn't come automatically. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've written that in my notes actually, um, because the important thing for me has been to establish a personal self-care practice that works. Um, I've been in a 12 step program myself this year and I found that really helpful, but I've been unable to find a sponsor because of the shortage of sponsors. Um, and I also coach others in self-care practices and um, it's given me the idea to to really document my self-care practice actually so that when I'm in situations like this when someone dies suddenly and you know grief is a is a huge trigger you know and, and the family dynamics that come up as well with you know unfortunately it was my ex-husband's niece so there was a whole load of issues triggered you know um, and I and I and I'm, I recognize now that my self-care practice wasn't robust enough and wasn't documented well enough. And also I didn't have someone around me that could say, hey, hey, Grace, you know, have you done yoga today? I, I don't have that person. And that's what I realized in these last few weeks was that, you know, I, I need that person in my life and I need that information to be available to me when I hit red and I want to smoke and drink, you know, um, I, I need to have something like you say your brain's not working when you're in red <laughs> yeah thank you so much i'm complete you know i can remember reading a uh, chapter about uh, how it works. It was called How It Works in the recovery book that the alcoholics use. And it, it said, I think it's on page 53, they read it out at nearly every meeting and it says, here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of a path to recovery. And it said, uh, really have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path? 
those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not simply give themselves to the simple program. Um, I'm just thinking, uh, I have translated chapter six of our book and Tammy is so nice to, to proofread it and edit it um, and Anna as well. And um, who is not yet, um, I can give you access to it, to read it if you want to. And you can give me your email address, which with you are, uh, with which you are in uh, Google, so I can add you, and you can see it, uh, and and use these are the this is our toolbar, and what I um, so it's it's about how do I um, deal with myself when I'm red how do I deal with myself when I'm in yellow? How do I get myself into green? And then how do I deal with other people when <laughs> once I'm in green or in a good mode, how do I deal with other people? And then how do I uh, work in groups? So we have a lot of practices. There's about 60 pages and there are 10 pages of appreciative questions that you can use in all kinds of, uh, so if you want to, I can add you to that. Um, and you can just, yeah, work with it, <laughs> take whatever you want. And maybe you can, uh, give me some feedback if, if you find something that, that is not so accessible or you think it could be better written. So. So that exists already in English. Thank you. Hi, I sleep well. <laughs> Hi. Did you have something, Heiner? Yes, I was waving my hand for some time, but I need to spe uh, speak low because my friend is sleeping. First, uh, Gertrude, I really like it. I find it so simple and so great that it is not in every school book already. My concerns were close to what uh, Fleming said. Uh, I look very much in the gestures of Cisterciensis, that's a monk's order, which were promising to be silent all their life. So they developed this language of uh, not saying I'm red or I'm blue or I'm yellow, but really even told jokes through the geisha language. And, and I think what you're doing is just a fundamental first step to really become aware of us, but also reflect on, on the language, how to com communicate with others, with others as we uh, looked into Occupy. There are many ways that we have to realize, am I blue? No. Am I red or am I yellow? And, and my question to you, Gertrude, is how do we address this in a group when three people are red, some yellow, and only a few green? I had an emergency situation, such a, such a phenomena, and I find it very, very important that we have it maybe as a moderation and mediation device to really signal when we can see our gesture languages where we are stuck or what we are in or what our stumbling blocks or our leverage uh, flights are at, at that very certain moment over. Yeah, thank you, Heine. Um, I think they're, they're different. If, if the group knows the concept, you can address it. And you can, and if you're allowed to, to say, okay, 
you know what, I think this is a very red conversation. Could we just breathe a little bit or whatever? So, or can you just run out <laughs> around the block and come back? Or, you know, you can. So, um, I, I get that people really laugh about it. So, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm coming back five minutes. Uh, things like that. Or, or they, they stop the, the assembly line and just come together and say, this is red. <laughs> and and they, they just get back and, and then move on. So that, that is a, an important thing because you cannot address it if they don't know the concept, then it's an insult. But you can, if, if you manage yourself, you could, like if somebody is complaining, 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 then you could do, and we have done it, like time out and say, okay, what are the complaints? And then they say, okay, what more, what more? It's like they, they throwing pebbles at you and you don't throw back. You just <laughs> store them with you and then they are free and don't have any pebbles anymore. And so they the mind gets freer and then they are thinking beings again or other, they're different things, but it's really different if they know the concept or not. So if not, you have to be careful. Okay. So you see, I'm very much in mediation, multi-track diplomacy, peacemaking projects. And there mm -hmm. are participants, maybe one third is red, one no one fifth is uh, yellow and the others are green and throwing the pebbles out is not enough then you have to see how can we bring the pebbles together what is a pebble we pick up first and how do we do some peaceful peacemaking so actually it's a very uh, interesting uh, discussion but the signal is here getting very very bad i will mm -hmm. listen to the rest mm -hmm. yeah i mean um the the non-violent communication has a lot of tools and so there are many different ways of addressing that um yeah and and we have can you maybe see that it's um that's the street light <laughs> so we have um we we um have a paper and we ask people to to have stones or something and then during the seminar uh we once in a while we just stop and say okay where where are you at or so, or somebody says something and somebody else uh stands up and puts his pebble right in red you know so you don't have to say much um and and this is fun. It's really fun because when when they know the concept and then they 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 work with it, it it's very easy to see who is where and what needs to be done. It's very simple. You just take a A4, <laughs> do red, yellow, and green, and and just some pebbles, some whatever gemstones or flowers or whatever that might be. I guess there needs to be a willingness to be self-reflective um, and, and to, to grow that. So I'm just wondering what are the kind of trigger sentences or ways to invite um, self-reflection in those moments in a way that's not offensive or further triggering the person. It's a puzzle, it's a puzzle, but I'm really interested in, in our collective consideration of how that can be done. I've seen it, I've seen it happen effectively on this session, not this session, one of the previous sessions where Rather than call somebody out for their behaviour, they were called in.
And one concept of the, the nonviolent communication is that there are no negative needs. There might be negative actions, but that I state <laughs> that behind whatever people do, there is a valid need. And if I get that, <laughs> I can address it differently. But then I have to go through the pebbles first, <laughs> mostly. I, you know, I, in thinking about the antidote to red, um, I always, I always tend to when something triggers reactivity. Um, the place I try to get to as quickly as possible is, is, is curiosity and inquiry. And it's absolutely impossible to figure out how to ask into or feel into something from red. <laughs> like, like that part of the, that part of the brain just isn't available. And, um, so I've, I've found that as a strategy that it at least, you know, stops any action or respond, reactive response uh, and turns it in, 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 it turns it inter, internal to getting to a place so that I can actually get to a question to try to like um, go there. And um, it is, you know, I think I've shared, I think I shared in, in, in unblocking context that, you know, there's that that human gravity sort of feel of and pull where when something happens and somebody goes red there is there's also sort of a natural almost programmed imprinted reflex for people to pick sides like it becomes the catalyst to to polarize and and um uh and this mech this mechanism really i i keep coming back to a vision of it in motion as an expressive tool that that you know if that starts to happen what you're going to have whichever side somebody's on if if the level of red is going up then it's like all hands on deck time to stop and, and not um, to infuse it and not to fear monger it. Yeah, not, not, not to yeah. fuel, fuel it, right? And um, that's a really powerful idea. That idea alone is a really powerful, like minimize the cost and the damage of that kind of escalation. I had a, a board member uh, who hired a very fine person with a wonderful bio and everybody loved him and it was a very good colleague and, and so but as soon as he came into the office of that boss he was in this complaining mode he was completely in red he had something with bosses and and i i coached this board member and um, he was desperate. <laughs> he was like, I hired that great guy and now he's kind of, who is that person? And, and, and then we figured out that he is not capable of thinking as soon as he comes into the boss's office. And, and this is really, um, so you have, you have a crocodile in front of you. Yep, this is a reptilian. There is not much more. And, and to be aware of that and find ways to, to address that and, and the other one getting coaching and whatever that might be. Maybe some people need therapy uh, to, to get to the, the, the trigger points. But to, to get that this person cannot think 
cannot in 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 companies when when people say okay we we fire 10,000 people <laughs> so everybody is in red not just a few or these and 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 so the whole the productivity the potential that could help that uh, company is is in danger and if you're aware of this you you can deal with it because otherwise you you just are helpless in in front of 10,000 crocodiles As you were talking, sorry, Alex, I just, I'll just, I remember Gertrude several times in these sessions where you've had to stop for a couple of minutes and go into silence and then speak to where we're, where we are at the moment. And that's one way in a group that's worked really well. If there's really obvious tension and we need to actually stop as a group, um, that's worked really well when, when you've led us there. Sorry to interrupt, Alex, go for it. I was going to say that it reminded me of the two, the two different aspects of responding or reacting. We, uh, when we're in the red mode, we're more likely to react than respond. So that's a trigger. Uh, there needs to be a trigger when we recognise somebody's reacting rather than responding. Well, there doesn't need to be, but it would be useful. I think that was what Gertrude meant. Gertrude meant when she said that she would get them to pick up the stone and put it in the red because she needed to facilitate that trigger for them. And then once they understand the technique, then you can go more of a symbolic basis. I have a question for you, Gertrude. Um, what can, how can we best serve the development of this work? And I know that uh, you know you have the translation of the book as a process, as well. How can you be best served in progressing this work? Hmm. I would love you to to look into that. Um, so I started with chapter six because that what we call the toolbar, where you can do your own tool mix. <laughs> and um, so to to work with it and and see if the instruction works. <laughs> like I mean, it, it for me it's an it's. In German, I know it works, but uh, is the translation working? So that somebody who doesn't know German can do it easily, that that would be a support to to have, because that's that's the, the soul of, I mean, we, we talked about, and we talked about the, 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 the traffic light model, and then we have chapter three, where we have a lot of examples out of, out of uh, companies, and then in, in five, we have that, um, the methods like the, the um, appreciative uh, communication, um, appreciative inquiry, um, coaching over the phone, um, whatever. Um, and, and six is really like the, the, the meat, the, the, the juice <laughs> in and if that works, that's really, that would be really, really great. That you you really take some of those practices and, and, and just work with them. That would be great. And and I want to translate it till, till uh, December, so support in that. Not the translation itself, that's what I'm doing with a bilingual person. 
but once it is in English, that it's really English, that is workable <laughs> in the English realm. And I would like to, to do some more of those webinars or so, and we want to, to support people and teach people how to, to do these. Um, so we do two or three days to work with the own things and to teach people how to do that with others. That's, that's one of the next steps. So that possibly you are all capable of doing that yourself and working with others. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. And we are having, um, in German, we want to do it for, every, this is for uh, business leaders. <laughs> so these were our clients, so we address them. And now we are wanting to, to write a bestseller for everybody uh, and do point. that. Pardon? Uh, it sounds like Heiner's got a glitchy, yep, he's dropped off. Hmm. Sorry. So we want to do it in, in small booklets with um, Harry, maybe, <laughs> to do some, some um, oh. um, illustration. So it's not so such a severe book, but more fun and applicable to, to everyone. And, and we will do that with German people, but I, I want to have a mixed group. So to have English and German at the same time. I'm just wondering, Grace, if you need something still. I mean, from here, that group. Um, no, I think it's really helpful. I think it, it's made me think about um, there was a summit that was held at the Findhorn Foundation in Scotland. Uh, I think it was in 2014. And they had gathered a large group of people from all over the world to discuss creating a new story for humanity. Um, and I was thinking about some conflict that came up. Um, um, they seemed to resolve it offline because the whole summit was actually streamed on the internet. Um, it was live streamed. Um, but it was very. It was very emotive, and I like—I I really like the simplicity of the um, the book and the information that you've prepared. And I think um, maybe what happened at Findhorn, you know, is that the that people were able to align with their understanding of of being triggered, and the traffic light system is very simple in that respect i think the key to the resolution of the conflict at findhorn which was big and public because it was being streamed across the world and it was indigenous thought leaders and you know a lot of very significant people were there um i think that that having that simplicity but but having a facilitator that could hold it was was really key and i think it wasn't just one facilitator they had a team of facilitators and actually what was interesting to watch live <laughs> was the facilitator going into red <laughs> 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 but actually managing to hold the space it was it was quite a powerful experience of, of group gatherings and I've, I've, I've been involved in, in some large scale corporate 
situations that have been very fractious. Um, having a facilitator was was always the key to resolving resolving it. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I that's really just come up for me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have uh, so in the appreciators, we always work with two people. So even if the group is rather small, so one holding space and the other one facilitating. And we have this understanding if somebody's in red, we switch or we deal with it. So um, that you cannot facilitate if you're in red. So the other ha can step in and say, okay, I take over. So that we are always in that mode to, to support each other and to see where we are at. Yeah, I think that's really powerful because that's also coming up with um, some of the people in my network that are proposing to hold um, transformational retreats and workshops, etc. that we're recognizing that, that it's really important to have someone holding space for you as well. Um, and it, it kind of reflects back on what I was saying earlier about the self-care practice. You know, because sometimes when you're the facilitator, are you also aware of your own self-care needs? You know, because sometimes it's as simple as, you know, is everybody hydrated? Is everybody, is everybody <laughs> too hot or too cold? Yeah. Have you been to the, it's a bit dealing with my kids when I'm home educating, you know, it's like, have you eaten? You know, are you hungry? Do you need the toilet? <laughs> you know? But sometimes when you're the facilitator or you're the leader, you know, of a, of a group, you need someone there to hold space for you to very sort of, you know, not to parent you, but to just, you know, yep. sometimes when we're, we're leading a group, we're very mentally focused and we're not in our bodies because that's where we need to be. We need to be on an intellectual level. It's really powerful. Thank you. As Tammy does for me today. <laughs> there's a level, there's another level that Grace was alluding to, and that is, and it's a, it's the fourth color too that will go with it, and that's for people who are not fearful or angry in the red. They're not resentful about something or agitated, but they're, they're going a bit loopy because uh, of some psychotic episode, and the colour would be purple. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that could be. So, I'd love to do a little time check, actually, um, with everyone. We had this slotted for two hours. Uh, we've always been a bit loose with our end times. Um, but in respect of everyone's time, I'd, I'd love to just see, is this a good moment for us to do a closing reflection round? Uh, reflection and appreciation. So yeah. I'll invite yeah. that. Yeah, we could see if there's any question at the moment um, right now. And otherwise, I I was feeling like, yeah, that could be the time to close in a good way. I would like to add a last thought because I'm really excited, Gertrude, about your three colors because it's much better than black and white, good and bad. So we have transition, and I like the colors as we use them also in dialogue, in speak, slow down, shut up. And then I thought about making it in shades, not of gray, but shades of color, to see how I'm moving from red to yellow, or from green to yellow, or whatever, vice versa. I think there is, if we would come to such spheres of signaling, like I have my um, Tesla uh, bulb, I show in some of our
when I'm at home, then we come to an blue, and this shades of color. I mean, that is my work, and we try to do it in dialogues, but to really show it where we are, where are we stuck, and if Signal. He got stuck. Mm. <laughs> Someone yeah. maybe in a thousand years, green or two, but it's very futuristic, I know, but I'm crazy. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to add one more thing. Um, green you cannot make. So you can be active in red to get out of that. Um, you can um, decide in within uh, yellow if I go with adrenaline or rather oxytocin, but you cannot make green. You can only let go. <laughs> That's this is nothing you can improve. You cannot be better yet. Better yellow doesn't give you green. So this constant improvement and constant self-optimization and so that that doesn't work to have that new state so that that's important it's really scary but you have to let go <laughs> to to have that yeah so now i'm ready for a closing round and i will um, take the the emails in here and add you to the to the document so you can see it. Yeah. Uh, Gertrude, I've put the emails already in the email for you, um, just so you know. And uh, I've I've loved the session, and uh, I'm deeply appreciative for how many people showed up and how. Yeah, I feel that it's really good work for us as a community to learn this language and to consider how we can use this in our collaborative journey. I would like to, in the closing round, that you also say what you see as next steps or how can I support you or what do you need, what do you want? Yeah, what would you like to be? a good next step and what you take out of okay I, <clears throat> I like this i like the simplicity of it i noticed that in the conversation people directly without any learning start using the red green the red, the green, and orange colors as, as our yellow colors as a, as a way of addressing it. So that kind of indicates the possibility of it being spread rather fast. And and what you, if I could any take any advice, you need to spread it as fast as you can because then you can take over the the conversation. So uh, use us and uh, when you're far enough for this. And I'm, thank you for it inviting us. Um, what comes up for me next steps is, is this would be a really powerful tool for schools, like the younger the better, um, and it could almost be instantiated. So you indoctrinate the kids really young, but you implement it as part of the environment and the culture and um I mean, so it just gets self-reinforcing through practice um, but i really think that's a powerful nexus for this and thank you for sharing it i i'm really happy to finally get it <laughs> i i found it very interesting too and useful and i will take some of that with me and I also see it as part of something bigger of, of both being aware of what state we're in on a whole bunch of different uh, scales and also be a, being aware of where others are so not just assume we're always in the same 
place because we we rarely are and i think there's a lot of mileage that can be gotten out of increased awareness in that so uh i think it's a it's a useful simple tool and uh, i'll i'll look for more applications of that myself I just wanted to thank you for uh, sharing your work and how clear it is and how nice it is. And I keep hearing the word tool and community and helping us. So I was thinking maybe we can build on the website a toolbox. And inside of that toolbox, we can share our tools. Because I do think it's an excellent tool to prepare someone. Like you said, you, there's a prerequisite before they come on to a call like this, a Zoom call. And uh, not that that's the only tool, but the more tools that we can prepare people would be wonderful. So thank you for sharing this tool. I appreciate it. Thank you again, Gertrude. It's been really helpful um, to, to understand this in a, in a simple way. I'm learning a lot about the mind and the brain. I think one of the things that is also um, important to know is that people are quite often not aware of what they're feeling um, and that for me I think um, the education is, is the key and to maybe provide some kind of um, support and framework around training people in this tool and around self-awareness. I can't hear you, Fabian, um, but I can see that you're not muted, so I'm not quite sure why. Okay, I, I'm going to, to talk uh, through my computer, not through my, my headset. So I am thankful and in full appreciation, Gertrude, uh, for your generosity and uh, I think that, as Doug said, a uh, next step could be designing something related to the educational system. Uh, I have a uh, cousin's daughter who is doing a program of meditation and self-affirmation in, in some schools in New York. So uh, this type of uh, approaches could, could feed uh, those kind of, of systems that are open to those practices and on a global basis, not only local basis. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for, the, for the huge potential. If we want to live in a peaceful world, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Go for it. Nathan, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing this. It was absolutely quite well to be able to present with all these big concepts and in such a clear format. And um, yeah, I'm excited to uh, to uh, see what structures we can build to get us all the green. I believe there's a smart a smart watch. It has an app, there might be an app available that measures your heartbeat and your skin resistance to temperature and blood pressure and all that. And it tells you the green, red, or what color it is. <laughs> the face of the watch will change color depending on your mood or, you, or your adrenaline. Monitoring the system and show it to all the other people if we can all see the the background color of your screen changing, you've got signaling going on, real time signaling. So it's an interesting field, and I think it will develop. If you keep pushing it, it will develop into something bigger, global. The schools, yes.
I'm also wondering about uh, memes, little visual memes that we can share to, um, to, yeah, raise awareness, get people interested, bring people into the conversation. I wanted to step outside from the coffee shop <laughs> so you can hear me. Uh, thank you, Gertrude. You're amazing. That was beautiful. And it, I, it was incredible seeing my shifts in my body as you were sharing. And even as I was sharing, as the one person on my board that I sometimes have challenges with showed up for me to do a handoff. And I could tell in my body was going on. But I felt, even in this conversation, led me to be uh, more present with her. And it, was, it was beautiful. And uh, so thank you for that. And so I am curious if you have any workshops coming up or if you do offer coaching around this and if there's a link to any information that I could share either with my board or other people also. Any other final thoughts and reflections, questions? Ms. Winna? Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry to say I, I missed most of it earlier on because of the children. I had to go off, uh, off camera and off mic as well. But I will catch up. It sounds like a most excellent system. So I'll have to catch up and um, reserve and make comments later. Thank you, Gertrude. Hi, Gertrude. This is amazing. Um, needs, well, <clears throat> I want to add some of these things to the entrances um, and the exciting timeout room and some of the debate corners of the map where we have the discussion stuff. That I'm making because I think this is really good symbology. Um, so I need to talk to my art director about some a set of uh oh symbols. Like uh oh, gotta pull out the. <laughs> um, and I was surprised that a tool or a model like this doesn't already exist. I think Heiner mentioned that. Um, and <clears throat> it's actually, I'm here looking for little models like this that deal with people interfaces so it's um it's very direct in 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 my focus of interest and it's kind of interesting that and almost beautiful that some of the most beautiful gifts are the ones that are just right under your nose that you that you just that have always been there and you just you know because this is one of those things that it's quite obvious um but in order to express that and and again, and, and have people come up with new colors all of a sudden. It's like you gotta, you gotta get a handle on this. Um, and I can also say that I had a, we were talking about doing some mapping, so I had a personal um, introduction to this as far as something we could map, and we never got back to that because it's so busy. And then I get to endorse the the actual uh, quality of the system because I got to experience it and it does work. And uh, the first rule of Fight Club is not to talk about it, so <laughs> we won't go there. Um, although I think Tammy has a copy. I'm not sure if she's deleted it yet. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's amazing. So, um, and um, it's also nice to see the, the, the book Actually, the actual physical book, you waving it because I've got pictures of it, but I didn't actually see the, the actual book. Yeah, you can wave that again. <laughs> anyway, very good. That I, that was very informative, and uh, I think you did very well. So, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for coming. I mean, you didn't know what you were expecting. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for your. Um, yeah, just making the time available to, to listen to that. And this is really dear to my heart. There's so, there's so much of 
I'm 62 now, 82. I, I graduated <laughs> from, uh, from college and yeah, since then. So everything and all of a sudden it falls into place. And, and this was, um, I think what Colin said right in front of my nose, but I didn't see it till it happened. And, and so I'm, I'm very grateful for you showing up and for your support. And I definitely will add you to, to the, the document and happy to, to stay in contact and see what we can do if in schools, if with the illustrations and however to spread it because it's really, I'm really committed. My my mission is being source of appreciation for people and organizations worldwide. And that's <laughs> that's what I'm here for. So thank you. Thank you everyone. Yep, that's really, really dear to my heart. Yes, and thank you, Gertrude, for bringing your knowledge and wisdom and embodied work, um, because it's not only this work, it's how you live it. So um, with that, thank you so much, everyone. And um, our sessions are on the Facebook page tomorrow, um, of course, is a deep dive with Glenn Gasland. And thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so